Hello nerds, welcome back to Axangel RC. I am using the word nerds on purpose because after all that is what we are and you do have to be kind of a nerd to come watch the installation of an autopilot in a plane only a few days after having watched pretty much the same thing. Thing on the same YouTube channel, only with a different autopilot on a different plane. But, you know, technicalities. But seriously now, I finally did it. After months of stuff getting in the way or just not being able to muster up the motivation needed to do this, and since I spoiled myself with these omnibus controllers and all the things they include on one board, I finally installed the mini picks in the Nano Talent and I'm quite proud of that job. Despite the hundreds of separate modules, the wiring still doesn't look too bad, but I was forced to spread the items far and wide around the plane because grouping them all together was impossible. Basically, on the right you see what I removed from the Nano talent and on the left is what had to go in there. I did assemble the whole system prior to installing the modules in the plane just to make sure all will be working okay and in fact connecting the battery for the first time did not result in any smoke so I was happy. I did not use the original power module that came with the mini picks because that one was too big and heavy and I did read somewhere that people were having some issues with it so decided not to risk it. Instead I used a stripped down sensor module without the power bit that I had prepared long ago for my XKA1200 but never got around to installing. It only provides the current and voltage information so I got power for the flight controller from the 5V output on the Matic PDB which simplified the rest of the wiring even more because those are some well filtered 5V so I was now able to power the OSD module directly from the mini picks without all the interference that normally would be running through there if the mini picks had been powered from a regular power module. I do love these particular Matic boards. Now, even though the GPS that came with the Mini Pix is kind of big, I decided to still use that one as it was an M8N and I thought it would be good to finally start using these. I did remove it from the case and extended the cable so I can mount it as far back as possible in order to help with CG and to allow me to move the battery a bit further forward so it wouldn't hang over the VTX at the bottom. But enough nerd talk, you will be able to read all about it in my blog in a few days, hopefully, or as soon as I've had the time to update it and I hope to be able to have it done by the end of the weekend. Time to get it airborne now and see if all this is working as it should. The day I picked to do this wasn't the calmest of them all so there was quite a bit of shaking around but it did fly and after trimming it a bit I did test the fly-by-wire A mode and it worked great in stabilizing the plane. It does need some up correction on the accelerometer calibration as it is pulling it down just a bit but that is easy to do. Return to home on a switch worked pretty well as did auto tune and I did feel like it sharpened the responses of the plane a bit although I didn't spend too much time on it because I thought this kind of weather does not create the proper conditions for a good tune. After that I recharged the battery set up a simple mission and tested auto takeoff which worked perfectly and did let it run that mission for as long as the battery would allow. It did make it to about 90 minutes and covered just over 60 kilometers before landing which was about on par with my endurance run a while back but I have to admit that the autopilot was not as sparing with the throttle as I was so I might have to give it a try myself again and see if I can do better. Bad news is the mini picks alone was not enough to remove the rolling instability and the plane did shake quite a bit during this run which really is annoying and would be even more so if you have an HD camera on there and was planning to share the recorded video in any way. Most people would get seasick looking at this, I know I do. I did not have the strakes mounted though so next time I flew the plane on a cold morning I did have the strakes on it but this time I was also equipped with a Phantom to chase the Nano Talon. I let it run the same auto mission in the same way while going after it with the copter and even though I managed to get some nice shots of it, the Nano Talon is small and is bloody tough to find and follow in the sky. Looking at the recordings from the Phantom though, I can't say that the strakes had much of a difference even though the autopilot managed to keep the speed around at least 50 km an hour which is where they should have had an effect. Even though it was a cold morning, there were still some thermals and there was still some turbulence at certain places and you can see how it shakes around and just doesn't lend itself to nice looking onboard video. I think my next step would be to try out the flat wings mod and see if that is going to make a difference but it was important to do a few flights as it is now so I can have some benchmark recordings of before and after so I can do a proper comparison. I will absolutely chase it with the Phantom again after I flatten the wings because it does give a unique perspective on things when you are also able to observe the performance 
elements of the plane up close and from the side rather than just relying on the video feed and what you can make out from the ground. As for the mini pix it works great and just as good as any other pix hog that I've tried. Only issues I saw and I'm going to have to look into the cause of this was a slight delay in the OSD overlay update where I would change a flight mode for instance and it would change in the flight controller but the OSD at times would take up to 10 seconds to reflect the change and the same would happen with a few other items on the display like the altitude, the home arrow and some others. It does not really present a problem, the autopilot itself seems to be functioning perfectly and immediately reacts to commands, it is just this delay with the OSD updated times that is a tad annoying and I will try to figure out if it is from the OSD firmware version or perhaps the telemetry that is also connected there is causing this effect. In any case the mini pix is a neat little unit and by far the cheapest pix hawk around, not counting the omnibus F4 Pro boards of course, but unlike them it is mostly plug and play and can be installed quite quickly if you're not looking to create a masterpiece of wiring. The GPS unit that came with the set works pretty well and does have a compass on it just in case you would like to use that, although I do not use a compass on planes unless they are VTOL because it just adds that extra layer of complexity for very little benefit. The mini pix is also now officially supported by the Arduino pilot code but sadly as with the Omnibus F4 Pro the firmware for it is still in development so you can't just update by clicking on the icons in Mission Planner. You will have to go to the Arduino pilot firmware website and download the arduplane.apj file for instance and then in Mission Planner you will have to flash it via the load custom firmware option under the install firmware tab. But other than that it works like any other Pixhawk and requires the same calibrations only at a fraction of the cost so I think this is still a viable option for people looking for a pix hawk but unwilling to spend $200 on one. The Omnibus F4 Pro board is even cheaper but it does require a lot of DIY work to get it up and running and that might not be everyone's cup of tea. Now links for the stuff shown or used in this video can be found in the description below and using any of them to buy literally anything from those websites would help support this channel so henceforth you will have my unwavering gratitude as that is also how I make my living now. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you happy nerding and until next time.